How can I create surveys quickly and easily in the latest version of Lime Survey? Lime Survey 6. The first step here is to create a free test account with Lime Survey, and once you have done that, the whole thing looks like this. I have a small overview page here and can say directly here in the top left that I want to create a survey. If I click on it and then the whole thing looks like this, so that I can briefly enter a survey title, I'll just take this to the test. Here I can change the language, divide the whole thing into survey groups and if I want to adjust the admin name here, I just leave the default and click on create survey. Now I'm actually already in the middle of it and you can see here that I'm now here with the survey structure. So I can now set here how the whole survey should look like. And it is the case that a question group and a question have already been created here by default. So let's click on it briefly. So here's my first group of questions and if I want to change that, I'll just go to edit here and then adjust it here. So as an example, could I just put that into questions about food? So, then I go to save and close and then you can already see here that a question has been created within this question group. This is called a first example question and I can of course adjust it accordingly now. Go back to edit here and then you can enter a different question text here. For example, something like what's your favorite food? So, and now that I've already entered the question text here, a little hint, there is also the possibility to enter a help text. And here it also says by default, this is a question help text. So don't be surprised if this comes up with it later. Normally, you don't need that, so I'll just erase this here. And then I can make a lot of settings here on the right side. Let's take a look at them together. The first is that I can enter a code here for a question. That's important, later, when I want to evaluate the whole thing, that I've given reasonable codes here. One way is to just number the whole thing consecutively. So I'll call this Q1 for question 1. Then the most important question setting. What type of question do I actually want? As you can see here, the default is long free text, so it means that people simply get a text box where they can answer the question. Could be left as it is here. Of course, you can also specify answer options. That's what you can do here with these question types. I'll click on it here, then we can get a little overview of what types of questions there are. And you can see here on the left side that there is single selection, text questions, and so on. Let's take a quick look. The simple choices are those questions where the respondents can click on one of the answer options that I prescribe. And the most common thing is, I would recommend starting with, here is list of radio buttons. I simply enter different answer options and they are then displayed one below the other. And the example here is that you just asked, what is your favorite food here and then burgers, pizza, pasta, and so on. Okay, so what are the other question types? The other is text questions. So if you just want to give people the opportunity to enter text themselves. You can always see a little preview here. With the long free text, it's just a box that contains three or four lines. You can also make a short free text, then it's just a line here, or you can also make a detailed free text, then it's just a very large block. Then we have the multiple choices. This is always relevant if the respondents can tick several boxes. If you have a question that is formulated in such a way that it makes sense to tick several things for the respondents. And this is the so-called multiple selection. I would recommend starting with the question type multiple selection and then people will get the things displayed here just like with the single selection. But the whole thing is presented a bit differently with such square boxes and then people can tick several things here. Then the mask questions are more relevant for more advanced stuff, for example, equation questions or even date, time and any rankings and order and so on. So if you want to do more complex things later, you can take a look at the mask questions here. And then there are the matrix questions. They are also very common. I'll click on it here. The most common question is a normal matrix and that's a bit small here, but I think you can see it. You can enter different items here. Here for example different films or something like that and then you can have the whole thing evaluated here on such a scale and that is then presented as a matrix and therefore this name matrix question. So, that's a little overview. If you want to take a closer look, just go to the respective questions, then a small preview is displayed here so that you can roughly imagine what the questions will look like. Well, we wanted to ask about our favorite food and that's why I'm going to make the simple selection here, i.e. the list of radio buttons. As I said, this is also the most common type of question and then shows how you can enter the answer options. So I'm going to click on select here and then you can see right down here that you have the option to enter the answer options and also always a code to the answer options. I would recommend simply numbering the whole thing, 
Are you starting with one and then let's do the example, like pasta etc. Of course, you can enter as many answer options as you like here and then you just click on save and you can then look at the preview of the question. And I can go to question preview up here, then I can just look directly at what the question would look like for the respondents now. This is what it looks like at the moment. So here I have my question text, then I have an automatically generated hint text here, so that the respondents should choose one of the answer options and then the different choices are below each other. Now that this is a simple selection, people can only click on one thing. If you say I want to allow multiple answer options, then you would choose multiple choices. Okay, I've now closed the preview, I'm back here in the question overview and now I want to work on the question a bit more. So I'm going to click on edit here again and we'll take a look at the options on the right. We had already looked at the code and now adjusted the question type here. Now let's see what happens. You can then define which question groups this should be sorted into. We only have one so far. You can tell if you want to show miscellaneous option, yes or no. And here, for example, whether this should be a mandatory question. That is, people can simply continue the survey even if they don't answer the question or they have to answer that question. Then there are conditions. This would therefore only be relevant if only a part of the respondents were to be shown this question under certain conditions. If you are interested, just take a look at my YouTube channel on the subject of conditions in Lime Survey. There are several videos about it. So, the rest of the settings are now those where you can leave the presets for now. You can set things for logic here. So this is for more advanced things, if you want to do something like validations, that you want to check if the respondents' answers here match other answers in the survey. You can adjust the display if you want to change the whole thing a bit from the display. Has a few other settings and you only need that if you want to make a bit more special things. Well, I'll go here to save and close and now show you how to add another question. So now you have different options here. One is to add another question within this question group here on the subject of food. Or you can just add another question group. Let's start by adding another question. Now another question about food accepted. So, then it will be displayed right down here below. Within the question group questions about food and you can also see here the question code is G01Q02. This question code always denotes both the question group and here the question. Of course, you can also adjust the whole thing if that's too long for you. Then I can add another group of questions. Suppose now I want to ask questions about drinking here. Now go here to save and add question and can now create a question directly here then within this question group. So, I go back to save and close and then you can see the structure here on the left side. You just have this first group of questions here. You can also expand and collapse it and here is the second group of questions. And you can also move the questions within the question group here, if you want, or between the question groups, if that should be relevant. Well, if we want to take a look at the whole thing now, then we have different options again. I can go to the question group preview here, so I can see all the questions that are within that group here, or I can go directly to the survey preview, then I can see the complete survey. So I'm going to click on survey preview and then I'll see what the whole thing looks like here. On the first page, the questions about food are displayed, and then, if I click on next, then on the next page, the questions about drinking. So what is created here as a question group is then in the survey, at least that's the default setting, then one page at a time. Well, we've been here in the structure section all this time, and now let's go over here to the settings section. There we can then set everything that concerns the survey. Let's start here with the overview. First of all, we see the link that we can use when we want to start the survey, and we see text elements here. So there's a description, a welcome text, and an end message, and there's nothing entered yet, and we can change that right here with the text elements. Let's take a look at the general settings here, where you can adjust the survey languages. You can also add multiple languages if you want. You can make a few settings here regarding administrator, and so on, and a very important point here is that you can set the format. The default setting is that it says group by group, which means that each question group is displayed on one page. Alternatively, you can display all questions on one page, or you can choose question by question, so that each question is on a single page. A little hint about this little footnote that you see here, and it's that it's explained below. It says that these are the inherited attitudes and they come from the global attitudes to the survey group or to the surveys as a whole. 
So you have the option to make presets on your installation here, which will then apply to all the surveys you create. And this can always be found in the settings here, then marked with this little footnote here. So you can see the default here on my Lime survey installation is now that the questions are displayed group by group. You can also adjust that. Then you can choose the design template here. Preset is fruity. If you want, you have the option to switch to a different design template, so that the display looks a bit different. So here, as I said, we can insert the text elements. This is particularly interesting for the description of the survey. I'll write here in description poll so we can see where it is displayed, and then I'll write the welcome message in here. Then you have the option of inserting a privacy policy here. This will then be displayed on the home page. If you are interested in more detail, feel free to take a look at the video on the subject of data protection. So design template options are relevant if you now say, I like this fruity design template quite well, but I want to change the colors or something like that, for example. Then you can go to customize design template here. Then you can make a lot of adjustments, for example down here at the variations. Okay, I'll select and go to save, so you can see what the whole thing looks like. So if I go to the poll preview here, you can see that everything that was green before, the buttons and so on, is now shown in orange. Well, then here is the area of presentation, where you can set everything how the survey should be displayed. An important point here, for example, is whether the welcome screen, i.e. this home page, should be displayed, yes or no. I've turned this on here now. You can also turn it off, then you can start directly with the questions and a lot of other possibilities, such as whether the questions should be offered an answer option, no answer, whether this formulation should be on the home page, this survey has so and so many questions. There are plenty of options here. I would recommend just getting a little overview when you start the survey. As soon as you are satisfied with the survey structure, you can activate the survey here and then forward the link to the respondents. If you want to take a closer look at this, you are welcome to take a look at the video on the topic of activating and conducting a survey. So much for a short introduction to Lime Survey 6. I wish you every success with the application. If you need support, feel free to check out the comments or the video description. My website is linked there. There you can see my offer as an authorized Lime Survey partner. So, for example, I offer to support you in creating surveys. I can also create entire surveys for you or offer trainings, for example, if you need an introduction to Lime Survey.